Hi, Luguru21 here today, and I have uh, a quick little comparison video actually. Uh, about, uh, you, you can actually see in one of my other videos, this is a Quick Set Smart Key Uptown, which is uh, what we coll uh, uh, colloquially refer to as a Gen 3 lock. Um, and over here, I have a uh, Quick Quick Set Smart Key uh, 980. Uh, which is uh, seems to have more or less the same uh, Gen 3 core. Uh, might technically be a Gen 2 core as opposed to Gen 3. Not not 100% sure. I haven't uh, looked quite closely enough. Um, but it, after so when I when I first created the video uh, picking this lock. Uh, a little while later, someone left a comment on the video saying, hey, I bought this new Quick, uh, quick Set uh, 980, 985. Uh, I think there, uh, there, there was also another couple of models that he mentioned. And uh, I, I, it's immune to your picking technique. Uh, I, no matter how hard I try, I can't get uh, the pick in there. And... I don't know if I just didn't see the comment at the time, if I ignored it, if I saw it, took up, uh, took a look at the cost of the lock and went, no, I'm not going to spend that much on, you know, essentially the same lock to, to see that it's not, not significantly different. Um, but, but for whatever reason, I just didn't uh, really have any follow up on that. I, I didn't register it. I didn't follow up in any way. But the other day I was uh, kind of going through my handful of videos that I have up and kind of taking a look at the comments and ran across the comment again. And I figured, well, what the heck, uh, let's take a look and see what the cost of the lock is. Uh, and while most of the 980, uh, 985, uh, I think there's like 680, 685, something like that, um, most of them are around 30 or $40 on Amazon. The Bright Brass model, however, is actually closer to $15. Uh, and I think it's, it's because, uh, Bright Brass is a, is a little bit of a dated aesthetic. People don't typically buy that much for their, uh, houses anymore. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think it looks fine, but... For whatever reason, people uh, are mostly going after kind of other finishes. Uh, but either way, it prevented a good opportunity, or it prevented it, it uh, <laughs> not prevented. It uh, provided a good opportunity for me to get my hands on this lock and see is there an actual difference. So it showed up. Uh, I very quickly tore into the box yesterday and tore apart the lock and went. Oh, th this is no different. Uh, I, I, this is dumb. Uh, this is not going to be immune to my exact picking technique. No big deal. Uh, decided today to go ahead and just do a quick uh, picking video of it just to kind of show, hey, no big deal to pick this lock. Uh, and ran into a problem, actually, uh, because no matter how hard I tried, as the uh, as the comment stated, no matter how hard I tried, uh, I couldn't get the shim to go into that uh, sidebar channel more than about this far, uh, which is which is really barely at all. Uh, and I figured, well, um, I haven't actually tried picking one of these in uh, quite some time, basically since I created the the Gen three video. Um, I'm probably just rusty, uh, so I pulled out uh, my old Uptown here and was able to very, very quickly get the, uh, the, the shim into the sidebar channel. As you can see, that took me a couple of seconds at most to get it in there. Uh, in fact, this is too far to pick this, um, although I've already got the, the key in here, but uh, it there's no trouble at all. 
So I decided to do a side-by-side -side tear apart to figure out what the difference is, why can I get the shim into this one and I can't get it into this one. Um, and uh, I was able to figure it out. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly try and take these apart just so I can show you the difference. Um, there are a couple of minor differences. Uh, the first is that the Uptown model has this very thin uh, wire clip holding the, uh, the plug into the lock body, whereas this 980 actually has a rather beefy clip on the back of it. I, I don't know if uh, Quickset discovered that uh, that thin wire uh, retaining clip was wearing out, or maybe someone actually developed a, a pulling style attack where they were able to uh, break this clip or, or something like that and actually pull the plug out. Um, but either way, they changed it up for this rather beefy clip. Uh, the next, uh, other than that, the lock body is essentially the same. Uh, I can interchange uh, or the, the the plugs between these two lock bodies. There's no difference at all. Um, that is not what is preventing uh, my entry into it. Uh, from this side, uh, these look primarily the same. In fact, um, there's some numbers stamped into the sides right here, uh, and those stamps are, are actually identical. There's uh, not like a numbering change, and as far as I can tell, these look more or less the same. Um, yeah, so no real difference from this vantage point. So then I went to the next step deeper that I can go and took apart and, and took the, uh, the plug out of the inner ring here, or the outer ring, I mean. A couple little pieces there. Uh, and when I slid this out, A little BB there. Uh, from this vantage point, these are still mostly the same. Uh, in fact, I kind of suspect that I could put both of these plugs into, I could swap the, the outer housing here uh, between the two of them and run into zero issues with the interchangeability. Uh, there's some minor uh, differences as far as the injection molding here goes. This, uh, this older one has uh, whatever this little cutout is, and uh, the newer one does not. Um, otherwise, these are mostly the same at this point. Uh, I, d I haven't actually taken these apart further than this, so there could even be something under, uh, under this guy that's a little bit different. Um, but I kind of suspect not. I suspect that the inner working is essentially identical. Uh, so then I turned my attention to these rings. Uh, the, the part that actually keeps the plug from turning without the, the key being uh, inserted. And uh, you can see in here, so this is the, the old one, uh, this right here is where the sidebar goes, and it's actually where I'm uh, inserting my shim. It goes down the length of this while pushing against the sidebar, uh, which tensions the sidebar up against the key pins and allows me to pick the lock. This one, however, at first, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought, oh, maybe they put something inside of uh, that channel to block the, the pick because uh, that was actually something that I thought of uh, when I was originally picking this guy um, might be the case, but there is actually a difference. If I hold this up really close, you can see this one is wide enough for my shim to go into. This one, you can see there's this little shelf on either side of it. It actually prevents my, my, ten, uh, my shim from going in more than just 
a very tiny amount. Um, so I'm guessing that they modified the mold. I, I don't know that they modified it specifically to prevent uh, this picking technique because ultimately I don't think that this would long-term provide any more resistance than this. Um, so maybe they had another reason for making that modification because all of that I would need to do to be able to pick the, the slightly newer style one is to just shave down the sides of my tensioning tool a little bit and basically allow myself to get the, the shim all the way back. So that is the difference between the old style Gen 3 and the slightly newer style Gen 3. I, I don't know that there's really a reason to uh, update from calling it a Gen 3 uh, because all that it is, it's a, a very minor uh, modification to this housing. Um, but there you go, that is uh, that is the difference between the old style uh, Gen 3 and the slightly newer style and why it is able to currently successfully resist my picking technique. But like I said, uh, if I just modify this shim, I think I would be able to get in here just fine. So have a great day and I will uh, talk to you all later.